Welcome back, everybody, to another Small Engine Sunday. I'm Lord Duckman himself, <laughs> and today we're going to be working on this candy spider, whatever the heck it was, go-kart. I'm going to get back onto this because I've collected some more parts for it. I'd like to get the rear suspension together on there. I've got a set of trailing arms. They're right over there. See them? I'll walk over there and have a look at them. But this single trailing arm apparatus nonsense, which somebody butchered, they cut the crap out of it and set it up to put a Predator engine on it when I bought this. It actually had a Predator 301 on it. The very same engine that's in my KT196 right now. But anyway, this whole swing arm and these wheels are going to come off of here and this thing's going to get upgraded to a whole bunch of fancy new stuff. And some of the stuff that we want to put on there is going to be these set of trailing arms right here. So that way it's got independent rear suspension. Now you might remember in the past I put together this uh, entire Volkswagen axle and I made the hub out of an old drum. I cut it out of there, turned it down on a lathe, got it nice and round, and making some, well, essentially using different spacers that I had around the garage, I made the axle fit inside of there with a brand new set of bearings. After I took out the old bearings that were in there, that's the old seal, the old bearings. Happened to have the same outside diameter. The inside diameter is smaller to fit over the Volkswagen axles. I need to do the same thing to this side. Now, you may remember in the past, the vendor that sent me these, they sent me two left-handed side ones instead of sending me one left, one right. So anyway, there was a little bit of a fiasco getting that sent back. The vendor for that was really, really good, and I'm very thankful for that. And it wasn't HIPAA, by the way, because ordinarily I would go to HIPAA for all my stuff, but this is something that just unfortunately I didn't have. But when it comes to all my go-kart and small engine needs, I do go to the HIPAA store. And that's who I recommend you guys visit. My friends, you need to check out the HIPAA store for all of your outdoor power equipment needs. Someday your mower is going to quit. And if you perform your own yard work, you know how much that sucks. But if you're operating a landscaping business, then you know just how debilitating that can be. So check out the HIPAA store and get yourself a carburetor, chainsaw chain, spark plug, or more before failure can occur. So that way you're ready for it. HIPAA products have helped us here to get many dead engines back up and running again. Often you can collect everything you need for less than the cost of a meal at your favorite fast food location. So it would be wise to get your parts ready. So check out the HIPAA store by following my affiliate link down below in the video description. Because when you support the HIPAA store, you also support my video creation on this YouTube channel. Special thanks again to the HIPAA store. Well, anyway, we're back today. I'm going to drive the bearings out of this because these are the ones that are set up for the uh, uh, go-kart that this is intended for that has different axles. Some people have said in the past, you know, why don't you just put some Miata axles on here or something because that's going to cost me more money. What do I have an abundance of around this place? And that's Volkswagen stuff. I got some old rusted out drums that are no good for anything. They're just going to hit the scrap heap. So why don't I just cut out and make some hubs? And the axles are certainly good. There's no reason I need to uh, throw them away, right? Free stuff. I've also got a whole bunch of CV joints and axles over there so I can make something work when it comes time. But this is the rear suspension that I'd like to put on there. I've seen other go-kart specialists on YouTube do the same. Um, so I guess we're going to get started on this and I want to get started with the drum first because we need to cut this sucker out. Now I caught a lot of hell in the last video where I talked about doing this because I ran around it with an angle grinder. It wasn't this one, but I ran around it with an angle grinder. You can see the slot that I started to cut it in. And then I put it in the lathe and rounded it out. People said, that's the wrong way to do it, duck man. Just put it in the lathe and cut it down. Well, the trouble is, it doesn't fit in my lathe. If it were like an eighth of an inch smaller in diameter, it would probably be close to fitting, but it doesn't fit. And I'm sure there's somebody already posting down in the comments, look, well, we'll just cut the lip off of it then and then put it in the lathe. Well, we're back to cutting it down. <laughs> So why don't I just cut it out to begin with and it's a bit of a process you can see I made a slot right there And I started to cut a groove all the way around it It'll probably take about 30 minutes to get through it and there'll be iron filings absolutely everywhere You can see where I was cutting earlier and I had filings here In fact the shirt that I was wearing last time had a, a rusty ring around my neck where I got sweaty And it was all rusty in my armpits and my skin was actually stained rusty for a couple days until it actually came out it uh, it was bad. Today's a good windy day, a little bit breezy out here. It's also solar eclipse day, by the way, so we might take a break to go have a look at it later on. Uh, hopefully, we'll be done with this by then because I want to work on the 74 Super Beetle up front as well. But anyway, all that's noise. 
let's go ahead and get started on this thing, cut this thing down, see if we can turn it in a lathe, and I want to start assembling this axle, knocking out these bearings and putting in the new ones. So that's what we're going to do today. So anyways, I appreciate you guys watching, so let's go ahead and get to cutting. came out a lot faster than the other one because I'm an expert now. Last time I did a lot of uh, a lot of running the saw around in a circle versus now I'm just cutting slots all the way around it. And I tell you what, that put a little fatigue on my wrist, but I'm not nearly as blackened as I was last time because last time I just threw dust everywhere. It's not even as hot as it was last time. Last time I couldn't handle it. This time I can. So I put a lot less energy into it this time. That's for damn sure. Well, all right. Now it's ready to be turned down on a lathe, and actually it's pretty round as it is right now. It's just got pointy spots on it because I did cut slots the whole way around. But anyway, let's turn it down the lathe. Let's get some of the tools put away that we don't need anymore. And we'll move on to the next step. Hot, 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 yeah, there it is, one wheel flange, hot, hot, all right, so here's our new flange, there's the old one, you see we got that set up and ready to go, gotta start knocking some bearings out of here, I think I'll clean this all up first, I don't need this uh, stuff getting in the bearings, in fact, look, it's all over everything, I guess I'll come out here with the compressor and just blow everything off real quick. Or better yet, I'll just run a magnet around and <laughs> essentially suck it all up. Look at this, it's all over everything. Yeah, I shouldn't have left everything over here. That was kind of foolish, but well, I did what I did. Now I have to pay the price, right? That's it. Otherwise, this should go on this axle. Yeah, for how much rust there is in there, it actually went on pretty smoothly. Now I wonder if I can get it back off. There you got it. There it is. <laughs> I'll throw it in a sandblaster and get all that scaly rust off of it. Hell, I could even use a descaler on it if I really want to go nuts. And then this sucker is about ready to go in. Like I said, next is knocking them bearings out of here. Once those bearings are out, we're in good shape to start reassembling this thing. And then we should have a trailing arm that looks just like this. It spins just as freely. And then we can start figuring out how we're going to mount these things on here. And I'm noticing that... I can probably catch one of these mounting points right about there where the existing swing arm is. I think that'll fit in there. And then I gotta come up with something over here. Now, looking at it this way though, you can see that this part of the frame is actually in the way because they're not evenly spaced. So if I'm gonna do that, I'll have to cut a notch out of here and then a notch up here or even a notch up there somewhere and bring this whole thing in just a little bit. And I don't mean much either, like an inch, maybe inch and a half. I mean, you can see it, how they're not in line. All I need to do is bring it that way, just a little bit. And then I can make some mounting tabs and get this arm mounted in that location using that mount. That's nice that it's already there. And what it would do is it'll also put my wheels out a little bit wider. Everybody always crabs at me and tells me the rear wheels are supposed to be wider. Well, honestly, 
On these carts, the front ones are always wider, and that's for stability. It's just, that's the way it's built. <laughs> anyway, for looks, this thing's going to be built extra wide in the back. I'm not too worried about stability because I'm going to drive it like a damn maniac anyway, probably up on two wheels most of the time. We're going to be having a good time with this thing, that's for sure. Look, Fluffy came over to say hi. What you doing, Fluffy? If she's coming over to see me, usually that means she's about ready to lay an egg. You going to egg? You going to make an eggy? Are you? <laughs> anyway. Yeah. She chickened out. As soon as I turn the camera off, she'll probably try to jump into my arms, and that's when she wants to go inside and lay an egg. <laughs> All right. Well, take a pause from this for the moment. We're going to go check out the solar eclipse stuff, and we'll probably start the Volkswagen video at the same time, which means, I don't know. To you guys, it's nothing, but to me, it's a bunch of logistics, so I'm saying things out loud that I don't even need to because you guys don't know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll be back in a minute. I did not realize that I got quite that dirty. I got me a mustache. Hmm, look like uh, one of the Marx Brothers. <laughs> Guess uh, the shit got around my mask a little bit, and that means it went up my nose. Great. Anyways, <laughs> also, there you go. Living in the hood. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Iron filings. All right, well, we're back, and I don't really remember where we left off at because I got distracted with the whole eclipse and started working on the beetle out front, and I never came back to this. But I do remember that some people were telling me the last time I cut all this down, um, when I did the other one, that I'm going to ruin the blades of my angle grinder cutting it down. It's just a waste. Well, this one still looks like it's new. And you saw I cut the whole damn thing out with one blade, and it's still serviceable for many, many more projects. Of course, I didn't buy junk ones, but... No, I'm not ruining blades. It didn't cost me a whole bunch of them, like it might if you were buying the cheapo Harbor Freight ones. I do know that I wanted to pick up as much of this iron fire as possible here. That got nice and fuzzy. Looked like my hair did in high school. <laughs> there you go. Pick up as much of that as I can. I was going to use compressed air. <clears throat> This iron filing stuff went through my mask yesterday more than I expected. My voice might sound a little funny today because I've been uh, coughing and sneezing. What's odd is nothing's really coming up, though. So I don't think I got as much as I might have thought of, but I did get some. Yeah, it definitely looks like my head in high school. Wow, did I have some hair back in the day. <laughs> anyway, we're going to clean up that mess. Then we got to start working on spacer stuff. These are the spacers that would normally go on the inside of a uh, trailing arm on a Volkswagen Beetle. These are too big for these trailing arms because these bearings are a little closer together. So I need to cut down one. In fact, I already have the one that's cut down that's supposed to go inside of here. That's one that I actually made the last time we did this. But I have two more spacers because I need to put one on the back side and one on the front side as well. And that's also including the other arm set that's over here because this one has some just random spacers that I put in there. And I'll show you up close here. It's just some stuff that I just stuck together to see if it would work. And proof of concept, you see these spacers that are in here. I want to put one spacer in there. So anyway, this is coming out. This spacer here I actually need for the other side anyway. So we're going to take some of this stuff apart and it's going to be repurposed, reused elsewhere. And of course, here's the hub that I made yesterday. All right, well, let me clean up some more of these iron filings and then uh, we'll get back to working on this thing. I'm going to start by disassembling this and taking those spacers out. All right, for starters, let's pull this out. I did not have that torque down for any of those that you're wondering. Almost lost it. Spun off the table like a top. All right, there is our hub, just out of curiosity. Did it turn out the same diameter? close. Not that they have to be matched anyway. It's not like they're side by side, you know, they're opposing sides. And what's the difference going to be? A few grams? <laughs> Anyways, um, this is the stack of spacers on here that I want to turn this into. There's another one on here that doesn't want to let go. Alright, I guess I need to get a mallet because you're going to watch a duck man beat off. Alright, this little guy doesn't want to come out. I've been tapping it. I think that might get it. Yeah, look at that. It didn't even take that much effort. 
All right, this is the spacer that we need. It needs to be equal height to this. So they need to be the same. So this one needs to get cut down so they match. All right, off to the lathe we go. All right, here's my spacer. That's what we cut it from. This should give us enough room on here. Wow, that's nice. The other ones I had to hammer them on, but that actually fits on there real nicely. Put our hub on here, and then our nut should go on. And if I cut the spacer to the correct length, I should be able to see the cotter pin holes all the way around it. down properly but yep there it is cotter pin holes are exposed all right this side which is the left side is effectively done I just need to cut out another spacer the same length to match to go on the other side and we can start assembling the other side at the same time right now so let's start by preparing this piece now just getting a good look at it that's so much better than a stack of spacers there nice one nice collar and I don't have the extra washer under here to cop up for the uh, uh, additional length that uh, was lost because the spacers that were in there were too small so the nut wouldn't thread on enough <laughs> had to actually put a washer on there which was one of these so I don't have to use that crap anymore Volkswagen factory never did anyway not that any of this assembly is Volkswagen factory <laughs> completely custom anyways let's go to cutting down that spacer Alright, here's our first bearing. These old bearings knocked out of here quite easily, but the inside of these trailing arm locations here, or bearing locations, I should say, there's no paint. The other one had a bunch of paint buildup and stuff in there, so the bearings they knocked out easily from this one. Anyway, that looks like it's gonna, feels like I can push it in with my hand. I might be able to. Now, I always grease the inside of these. I always catch crap from somebody about it. You're not supposed to grease the inside of that before you put it in. Well, you know what? It does two things. One, it lubes it a little bit for whatever it's worth. And the second thing it does, it also provides a place where water can't get into so things can't rust. Well, it kind of makes a nonsense thing to not grease it. Doesn't make any sense to me. Anyway, okay, I have a bearing driver here. You guys have seen me use this before. This thing is incredibly convenient. You find the right size like that. You open this guy up. Put him in there like that. Why didn't that go in? Oh, because the hole is wallered a little bit. I can tell I used that one the last time. I wallered it out. All right, we'll just go with the one that's a little bit bigger. All right, just thread that in there. It doesn't even need to be tight. It needs to be snug. Finger snug's fine. Just like that. And then up, up. That bearing's falling in. It's not even hitting it hard. I think it's in already. That's it. All right. Now we get to turn it upside down here. I don't remember which spacer was the one that goes inside of there. You know what? These are all rough cut. These are not them. Okay. Turn this over. Inside here, of course, goes that spacer, the one that we made earlier. Actually, this is the one we made in the previous video. I just cut it down a little bit more, but that goes in there now. Another bearing. Yeah. Open up you. A little bit of grease. going right in. Minimal effort. The other side I had a lot of trouble with. This side not so much. Alright. This should fit in the bearing hole. Yeah this one might do it. This bearing is actually going to be recessed a little bit because 
behind it is going to be a seal. Grease on me already here. I actually can put this grease away. I don't think I'm going to need much of it anymore. All right, that should push it down in there. As long as it fits in the hole, and it may not. Yeah, I don't think that's small enough to go in there. Where is it? Feels like the bearing's going in. Yeah, this needs to be smaller. I hear chickens flapping around behind me here. Right, we'll go with the littler one. You don't want to bang on the uh, inner race of these bearings because if you do, the rollers in them will pound the races and they'll actually leave little dents in them and then the bearings will feel notchy or clicky. I got it. Okay. It is. We're hitting our spacer now. At least that's what it feels like. Yeah, we're on that spacer now. Okay. And then lastly, we have somewhere over here a brand new seal. It's one of these. I don't know which one it is. It's that one. Brand new seal. It's nice and thin. All right. Put a little bit of grease behind it. I put the grease away and thought I might not need it anymore. Turns out we did. All right, a little more in there. Oh, there's actually a mosquito buzzing me right now. With the temperatures as they are. Yesterday it was near 90. Today we're like 59. <laughs> The mosquitoes really aren't doing much to harass me today. I think this is only the second one I've seen buzzing me. Alright, is this going to work on here? We're about to find out. Yep, that's going to get it. Alright, there's our trailing arm with the bearings all pressed into it. All these old bearings and things can go away. I'll put away my bearing zippity doo dah. I won't be needing that again today. I said that now, but watch, I'm gonna have to take it apart. You watch. There's going to be a problem, and everything's gonna have to be disassembled. <laughs> I hate when shit like that happens, and it always happens after you put away the tools that you say you don't need. Usually, if I leave things out, then I find myself not ever needing them again. It makes a mess instead. Okay. Here's the axle. Now, if I recall correctly, on this axle needs to be this spacer, which hopefully will go down all the way. It doesn't feel like it is. This is the one that is actually from the um, Volkswagen two-piece bearings on the outside of the IRS. Should go in there just like that. And this axle should press into it, but it looks like, or feels like, it's not going on here for some reason. Ah, oh, there it goes. Never mind that. There it is, it's on. Okay, right, now the whole axle should pop right into here. You know what I should do? I should put this in a lathe and clean it up real fast. It's, uh, it's rough with debris. It needs a good cleaning. Anyway, this should go in this way. Yeah, it feels like it's getting stuck here. Okay. That's what we're gonna do. Boink! Clean up in the lathe real fast, and then we'll attempt to put it back on. Now, I'm not sure where this axle came from. I don't know if it's German or a Chinese knockoff or what the deal is on this thing, but it is incredibly impossible to get the bearing. This is the wrong bearing to slide over. Once it gets to about here, it always stops. And the same thing was wrong on the other side, where these normally will go in. They take a little bit of effort, but these are just they require an immense amount of force. So I put it in the lathe, and I took down. I mean maybe a couple thousands and now when I push it into the bearing it still has resistance but see I can actually push it in now by hand I don't have to smack the shit out of it with a hammer which does nothing but destroy the bearings so anyway this should go in there now yeah it's going okay before I knock it in there all the way let's go ahead and put a little bit of grease on it as again moisture and yada yada just a a paper thin, not even paper thin, just a, a schmudge on here. Just enough. 
and also where the seal goes onto here. You want that to be lubricated, otherwise that's going to eat the seal. Ask me how I know. All right, put this back in here. I gotta find a block of wood. Yeah, that's much better. I can actually push it in by hand most of the way, and then from here it's gonna be. Yeah, I'll press it in. Okay, good. I'm in a good mood. I'm really, really satisfied with this. Let me grab that block of wood. Be right here. We will be right there. Right, looking around the yard, every piece of wood I look for is way too big. So anyway, <laughs> this is the best one I could find. And that ought to do the job, I would think. Yeah, it's going. It's going. Yep. A little more. All right. And then after that, now we have our spacer that we made earlier, which is already effectively lost. Great. It's gone. Well, it took me a minute, but I found it. It just rolled away. So anyway, got it. Goes on here just like that. On goes our... This rolled away too. It's got dirt on it. <laughs> this goes on the hub next. And then lastly goes on our nut. All the dogs are going nuts behind me here. Sounds like the two neighbors' dogs are fighting through the fence. This nut comes from... Um, this is Eleanor. An Eleanor nut. I don't know if the one on the other uh, axle is also, but this one I just took off earlier today just for this job because I was missing one. Turns out both of these axles have newer styles. Something's wrong with these threads. Aha, uh -huh, yeah, something is wrong with these threads. He's got borked. This axle fell on the floor in the garage. I bet you that's what happened. I probably should do hit that with an angle grinder real quick and just clean the threads up on it because there's a little burr sticking out of it. And when I start to thread this on, it, it starts and then I feel it cross-threading because it actually starts to do this. All right, we'll, we'll clean that up. Won't take but a minute. You know, I was just about to give up on this damn thing for the night because it's starting to get dark. And then sure enough, the thing spun right on. I don't believe it. I don't know what I did differently. I really don't. I have no idea. But anyway, one of those things that just, it, it drives you nuts and then all of a sudden it just works? What the hell is that? It probably was a little burr or something in the threads and anyway. The goal right now is to get this to all compress together. Which looks like it's, uh, it's going just fine. Much more. I think that's it. Anything further than that will be uh, torque, dude. Anyway, there it is. It is effectively on and it's spinning. Feels like fresh bearings. No notchiness, no weird shit. Good to go. Feels just like this one on this side. Okay. Pretty good setup on that, I must say. I came up with a pretty good uh, option for installation here that saved me money. I, I put almost no money into this at all, except for a set of bearings and seals, just to make sure I had the right fit. So there it is. Check that out. All right. Well, I am like really, really pleased. These can now go inside, get them out of the weather, although I don't think it's supposed to rain for quite a while. We got this uh, cold front came through, which I think was today. Cloudy as it was, it kind of... Sun came out for about 20, 30 minutes a little while ago, and tonight it's going to get cold down in the 40s in Florida in October. <laughs> Usually I'm dying right up until our car show. And our car show is actually next Saturday, the 21st of October, for the 2023 Rare Air Volkswagen Club Show. So if you're in the area and you want to join us, yeah, you like Volkswagens, it's, it's free admission for you and your kids. Bring your wife, bring your kids, bring your girlfriend, bring your significant other, bring your side chick, I don't care. <laughs> anyway, check out more information about it at rareairvw.com. 
Check out information about me and my stuff that I do up on duckshit.net. Licky, likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck that dingle belly so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out my website, once again, duckshit.net, for all my different social media links. And hopefully, I'll have some new shirts coming up this week, because finally they're in my budget. And I'm glad for that, because you can't hardly read my logos anymore. These t-shirts are worn. They're worn really good, too. I think most of them I had since 2017. If you'd like a Duckman shirt, duckshit.net. Click the merch link, it'll take you right over to the store. I've actually released some new designs, and you'll be seeing them this week. That's right, new stuff, guys. <laughs> so thanks for watching. <coughs> All right, just wanted to get a look at these one more time. Volkswagen axle in a go-kart trailing arm. Another one over here, one on this side too. So now I have to figure out when these go on the cart, how much spaces are gonna be between them how long my axles can be and how long my center spool is going to be that center or third axle if you will that'll have the CV joint cups on it where my sprocket will drive it and also where my brake caliper is going to go because this will be a locked up solid rear end so anyway that's what we got here this is what's going on and these are just about ready to mount on the back of here but we're gonna do a little bit of frame modification. I mentioned earlier in the video that I think I can move this leg here forwards, and I think that's exactly what I'm gonna do, because I'd like to grab that, that pocket, if I can, to mount the trailing arm in for starters. That'll frame up everything nice and square. It's already pre-existing, it's just it's a matter of just creating an other mount and being done with it. <laughs> I can actually put the rear suspension on this thing quickly. Now, I don't know if that shock mount's in the right spot. It might be pretty close. If not, I might have to move it over a little bit, but we'll play that by ear. I'd like to use the same shock if I can. They're a little worse for wear. They're a little rotten. I'll probably end up replacing them down the road. But to get the buggy sitting in place on its new suspension, those should be just fine. I don't see why not. And they're already sprung for the weight of this thing. Although it's going to get a little heavier because I do plan on putting a much bigger engine in here. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I'm still engine shopping. Right, Mama Chicken? <laughs> and here's the boom. Everybody always asks about him because I don't show him that much, but he's always in videos all the time because he's always attacking me when I'm trying to work. Right, Boomer? What are you doing? I'm chasing you now. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. <coughs> now, before we go, one more thing I wanted to cover. This is the only waste out of everything we installed here. The only waste that came out of this is going to be two shitty drum rings. Because these drums were so beat rusted. I mean, I don't even think they were worth trying to resurface. In fact, look, they're all banged up from whoever tried to remove them anyway. And that might have even been me. I mean, I don't remember. I don't even remember what these came off of. This one's actually not in as bad a shape. But, yeah, that's the only waste. So these are going to go into the recycle bin. And best of all, I got something out of them that I would have otherwise thrown away. For free. Free hubs! You know what these things cost in the go-kart world? And these are stronger, tougher, probably much heavier too. <laughs> but that's okay. Because these are come off of these come off of a 50 horsepower car, and this buggy's gonna be a lot more power than that when I'm done. So I figured it's good to have something nice and tough on there, even if it does at the uh, even if the compromise is just a little additional weight. So anyway, yep, there it is. Happy boy, I'm a happy happy boy. <laughs> and then you take this and you chuck it. Whee! Ooh, that was loud. And one more time. Whee! Oh. <laughs>